this video I'll be explaining how to set up a service that can be accessed from remote clients that are on the internet or over the internet. The first step to setting up a service is on the server is to install the software of course and then to go into the shortcuts menu and selecting client setup. In the client setup screen you have at the top section local connections. These will be the connections that the service will be exposing to the remote clients. As you can see I've got a number of different products and I've defined the connection details to the relational databases. You can disable some of the products and enable the others. Under local connections you've got a folder called services. This is where you set up the communication details for the service. You can see from the properties on the right hand side here I've got a choice of protocols. One is TCP and the other is HTTP. Uh, I can designate the port number, timeout period, and give the service a unique code. And the other options are for turning and tuning compression and encryption. In the attribute section, we can give the service a name that will appear when the clients connect to the service. And we can also password protect the service. I recommend that this be used if you're exposing your service over the internet. Just a general rule here that the clients must be on the same version as the service that's installed. So we've chosen our protocol, our port number and our service code. The next step if you're using the service over the internet is to ensure that the port that you've chosen is being forwarded on your router. To check that the port has been forwarded on the router, uh, go into your router settings, uh, which I've brought up on the screen here, and go into its port forwarding settings. You can see that I've did, worked out that the IP address for this particular computer is 10.0.0.3, and I want to forward the ports 4001 to 4003. Once I've done this, the client should be able to access the service over the internet. After forwarding your port, you also have to ensure that the IP address that you have on the internet is a static IP address and that you either have the IP address put into the local clients when connecting or they can use a, a, a user-friendly URL to connect to your service. Now that we've set up the service uh, attributes, we can save the client setup details and then execute the, the service by going into the shortcuts menu and clicking on service. When we do this, the service will initialize and start up. There is a, a short loading period, and once that loading period's uh, finished, the service is available to the clients. You can see here on the screen that uh, all your attributes that you've set up and the products that you've exposed to the clients are visible in the screen. To collapse the, the window into the system tray, just click on close. If you want to stop the service, uh, click on the stop service button. If there are clients that are using the service at the time, uh, they will receive error messages to say that the service has been stopped. I'm just going to click on close and you can see it's gone into the system tray. There are options to start the service on, window, on the startup of Windows as well. Now I'll take you across to the client side to show you how the clients are connecting to the service. So on the client, 
on the remote client in client setup you will see that there is an option for remote connections this is where you put in the connection details for the service notice at the top that local connections are disabled we don't want the the remote clients connecting locally to relational databases we just want the remote connection enabled that can be done by right clicking and enabling the connection or disabling the connection so our particular server that service that we set up was using TCP and port 4001 and we need to put in the IP address or the user-friendly URL for the server and put in a corresponding service code we didn't password protect the service so it's not necessary to put that in in the client then we can go down to test and this will test the connection to the service because communication speeds over the internet will affect performance there is an option to do a performance test because I'm running this service over the internet I've got a rating of over 800 here if I was running on the internet I would expect to see a performance rating of 10 or higher once it goes below 10 the usability of the product becomes uh, questionable so the higher the better once the performance test is done on the client they can then start accessing the service and writing reports I'm just going to do a quick query by selecting query I'll log in to the, to the system and I'll select the product lookup and you can see that the service has exposed various products that I can now access and start doing queries on just a few pointers on performance it's a good idea that the service be running on a computer where the relational databases are separated out onto different tiers so you've got the service on one PC and you've got your relational database running on another PC this way it splits out the load with regard to security all authentication details are encrypted by default and data that's passed between the service and the client is compressed and obfuscated by default but if additional encryption is required it can be run under IIS using SSL that concludes uh, setting up of a service